We have uh, Fraser Brown. Uh, <coughs> in just 12 months period from the last last uh, meeting here, uh, two two system is now up and running, and the first modern podcast system uh, in Europe is the one just 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 is going to be inaugurated in, in uh, days or weeks, and we will. Here, uh, speak here now from, from the manager director of, of uh, Ultra, and I know you have to, to uh, rush to the plane very soon. <laughs> so um, it's honor to, to welcome you, please. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, you're awake. That's good. Um, I'll try and speak. Uh, at a proper pace. I'm um, from Scotland and I have a very bad habit of speaking very fast, so um, if I do that, please uh, stop me. Um, my name is Fraser Brown. I'm the Managing Director of Ultra PRT. Many of you will have come across um, Ultra ATS as it was formerly known um, in the past, but uh, as the introduction said, um, this is really exciting because this is the first conference that I've been able to speak to where we can talk about a real system. Uh, with real passengers in real operation. And I've got a few slides and some video uh, where we'll talk through um, some of that. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, um, there's many different audiences here, um, and there's a couple of really important messages I want to get across. Um, as I said in my, my introduction, we're live. So, you know, there are, uh, as it says up there, lots of people who have doubted this, the gestation period, uh, making this come alive, um, has been ambition of a lot of people uh, in this room, a lot of people in the company that um, I'm fortunate uh, to, to look after. Uh, but now we're really proud that we've managed to get uh, the system live. So the Heathrow pod is open for business. Um, so to those doubters and to those cynics, we've proved we can make it work. And we heard there's, there's also planning issues as well. So again, there's planners and architects I know in the room today. And again, lots and lots of challenges with getting a system running. But for that audience as well, my message is exactly the same. We've managed this ultra uh, with a very uh, helpful uh, and cooperative client in Heathrow Airport uh, to get a system up and running uh, and have passengers on it. So again, the message is exactly the same to that audience, that the system is live and the system is running. Um, what we'll do is we'll play a little bit of video um, because I think I know a lot of you and Hans said it in the introduction had passed through uh, London la uh, last year had seen the system but I think rather than show lots of slides um, it's much probably better to see the video than listen to me so uh, we'll run the video This is a driverless pod system which is a way of getting passengers from the car park at Terminal 5 into the airport, and the great thing about it is it means that we can reduce the number of buses we have going around the airport, which reduces emissions, um, because these cars work without any electricity being generated on the site, and therefore no emissions on the site. The system now has replaced all those buses, which means we've taken out about 50,000 bus journeys. Compared to a bus, where typically you have a 10 minute schedule and you have to wait, the pod is available immediately. The vehicles are all launched autonomously. There are two berths immediately behind me, there's another two at the other end of the car park when you leave, and the vehicle is looking through four lasers on either side of the guideway to make sure it's in the right place. The technology and the innovative bit is the control system and the control technology on the vehicle. This is a huge innovation, not just within the UK, but internationally. It also allows us to free up the roads around Heathrow, which increasingly get congested as more people use the airport, and reduce the level of carbon emissions. And that's really important for the people who live in and around Heathrow. It's a system of 3.8 kilometres of track. There's 21 of the vehicles. Those vehicles are electric. They run a small motor, lead-acid batteries. And the vehicles typically use 70% less energy than, than a car would. This is the world first that Heathrow is proud to be involved with. It's something that's been talked about for 40 years, the idea that you can have driverless vehicles that will take you from any point to any other point. Um, and we've pioneered it here at Heathrow. It's been a fantastic experience for all of us who've been involved with it. In terms of where the system could go in the future, we're really excited 
here at Ultra about having got our pilot up and running in Heathrow and starting to develop with a number of partners around the world some potential projects and applications for the system. It quickly gets you to your destination without the need for heavy infrastructure. We're actively working with partners to, to see if we can get this innovative British technology out to the market. We're really excited that finally uh, it has come to fruition and passengers can use the pod system live. Passenger feedback has been wholeheartedly great. They appreciate the fact that they don't have to wait for the service. They appreciate the fact that the vehicle running on its separate guideway means that it doesn't get caught up in traffic and they have a guaranteed journey time. And I think also they appreciate the personal space that the PRT pod gives them compared to using a bus type service. The other thing I should have said this morning is I planned very well to wear the same shirt and tie that you saw in the video that, that I've got on today, so that's, uh, that's clearly good planning. Um, I think the important thing, and as the video shows there, the, the other gentleman in the video was the commercial director for Heathrow Airport. And you can see by the words, you can see by the deeds and the investment that Heathrow's put in that they've been absolutely committed to this project. And I think it's, it's, it's only through the commitment with a client like that that you can make these types of things possible. And it's only through um, showing some courage uh, that you can make these things possible. But you can see that when you do do that, you can see what the results are. And I'm going to talk about um, some of those results in terms of what we've been able to do. The, the feedback on the, on the charts behind me uh, isn't made up. I didn't get my uh, wife or my son or anything like that to, to, to write these comments. These are real comments from real people, from real travelling uh, air passengers through Heathrow, uh, picked up via Twitter and, and, and our own things. The, the one that I would add to that, the best one that I like, is, is the passenger who came and said to us, actually, I've been on a long intercontinental journey, I've made a couple of stops, and actually the best part of my journey um, was the Heathrow pod, and uh, that, that made us all proud, and, 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 is, and is nice to see. The talking for the client now, for Heathrow, the issues that have been talked about already this morning are the issues that Heathrow had. As a major campus, Heathrow employs about 70,000 people. Um, on an average day, they have a couple hundred thousand passengers going through the airport. The airport is a 70 million passenger airport uh, with four terminals. So the challenges that public transport in general talks about in a city, in a campus environment like Heathrow is absolutely the same. Um, Heathrow is essentially a city. Um, so issues like congestion, issues like land and space, um, issues around pollution, um, CO2 and other emissions in the aviation sector are very politically sensitive, um, are big issues. The challenge also in a growing aviation sector uh, is how do you manage things. Um, for those of you who are aware of Heathrow, they only have two runways and they run 70 million passengers on two runways. Now that is, is uh, a massive challenge for the airport operator, um, and that kind of capacity restriction on a runway basis is exactly the same as what they have for the rest of their infrastructure. They're trying to fit in something that if you were designing an airport again for 70 million passengers, we'd probably be double or triple the size in terms of land. So it's, it's, it's a real challenge for them. And all of these things together give passenger service issues. Um, the application that we've got running the pilot is, is moving people from a car park into a terminal and it's those types of final kilometre type challenges that, that this application that we've used uh, helps, to, helps to solve. But we're not alone, as, as the words behind me say, you know, airports, cities, business parks, anywhere where you have uh, the types of issues that are put at the top. Um, are where we believe, as Ultra, uh, that the pod uh, system, the PRT technology, uh, can be applied and can add real value. In terms of uh, other locations, um, you can see, again, the words, similar type of generic uh, problems uh, that Heathrow faces, uh, whether it be in an urban environment, as I say, or whether it be uh, in a city environment. The challenges in a modern world are the same. As the speaker said this morning, you know, a wet Stockholm um, is, is a challenge in a commuter morning. Uh, so is a wet London, so is a wet Heathrow. Um, so is you know, any city around the world. And um, with a growing urban population, uh, these types of challenges are not going to get better. And we therefore need to, uh, as an industry, as a community, uh, help policymakers 
planners, etc., to, to work through those challenges. Um, I'm going to talk in the next few slides about what we have achieved because we're very proud, uh, I think, rightly of what we've achieved. Um, as, as the video said, we're running now. We've been running since the 18th of April. So real passengers, uh, real people every day, passengers that are uh, customers of uh, the business car park at Terminal 5 at Heathrow. Um, we ramped up slowly, as you would expect us to do, um, a few hours a day, getting ourselves the right confidence, making sure that all the planning and all the good work that had been done by the company um, actually uh, worked and landed and the passengers were interacting with the system in the way that we expected them to do, which they were. So um, we, we ramped up to full service in early May and we currently run um, a full day uh, from 3 in the morning and until 1 the following morning to match up with the flight schedules from the terminal. Um, we have a slightly uh, longer uh, downtime on a Saturday and a Sunday morning where we do track inspection and that kind of thing. But essentially we are there to provide a transfer service uh, when Terminal 5 is open for uh, car park customers. We started off very small in terms of the number of people that were, uh, the number of journeys uh, that were on the system and these are all about the number of journeys. So we started off very small. Um, when I wrote this, uh, we had completed over 70,000 journeys. Um, I then made another slide because actually, we, having got through all these hours, we're actually nearer 100,000 journeys now. Um, so we're running full service, we're running essentially um, over 600 hours uh, every single month, um, and we're running it very, very successfully. Um, to be completely open, um, as you would expect, when we started, um, we had the Altina Club, <coughs> and the way that we did that in terms of managing with the client was we ran the existing bus service that this replaced in tandem for a period of time in terms of <coughs> confidence. But you can see from the charts behind me that we didn't take very long to get comfortable. Having done lots of testing, and I know lots of you uh, had been to Heathrow and had kind of looked and not been able to touch, as it were, uh, the system. Uh, when we were spending quite a lot of time testing, that really has proved uh, very, very worthy and time well spent for us because it only took us uh, a matter of two weeks uh, in that period of April to really wrinkle, uh, get out the final wrinkles. And since then, uh, I think we've got a system, well, I know we've got a system that most public transport operators in terms of reliability would be absolutely delighted to have. Um, and. If you take that data that's behind me in terms of reliability and match it to the customer feedback, you, you can paint a picture which is a reliable system and a system that passengers love. And that's, that's no coincidence that the, the two things are there. Um, the waiting time is another thing. Um, especially in an airport environment where passengers often are very, very conscious of time, plane won't wait for them. Um, Heathrow Pod does wait for them. It's ready, it's there for them. And comparing with the bus service that was previously this car park was served by uh, two buses on a 10 minute schedule. And we all know that you know you just missed that bus, so you've got nine and a bit minutes to wait, uh, at least uh, at best on average five minutes. Currently we're in the range, in the range of about 34 seconds as the average waiting time. So that's even taking into account peaks, that's across 670 hours. Uh, a month. When you get into waiting times in transport terms of seconds as opposed to minutes, you can suddenly see the, um, the attractiveness of, of uh, pod application. So from our point of view, we've proved some of the benefits, most of the benefits that academically, intellectually, had been discussed in forums like this for a number of years. We have proved that it can be predictable. We have proved that there isn't any waiting. We have reduced journey times. And forgive me the uh, abbreviation QSM for Heathrow as a client is Quality Service Monitor. And that's the way that Heathrow as a client asks its customers, so you if you're a traveling passenger at the gate, how did you get to the airport today? And what was your experience like? And when that customer says, I'm a Terminal 5 car park customer, 
And last year they were asked what their experience was like when they went on the bus. They rated it about three or so out of five. So mediocre, not very good. Since this system has gone in in April, we've gone from three and a bit out of five to four and a half out of five. And in an airport environment, uh, for any of you who know or have been involved perhaps with ACI, the Airport Council International, if you're getting scores of four and a half out of five on a large statistical population, you've pretty much nailed it. That pretty much says that customers love the product, they love the service, and they love what you're doing. And uh, Heathrow, as a client, is very happy about that, as you can imagine, and we as Ultra are very proud to be delivering that for them. We touched on, uh, and my previous uh, speakers touched on the environment, um, at Heathrow, as I say, with air quality and the aviation sector being extremely sensitive politically. Uh, again, the client is very happy that uh, they can re uh, talk about reduced emissions, both CO2 uh, and NOx, <coughs> and also be able to say that they've taken buses off roads. Because again, that congested, very small campus that is Heathrow Airport, any vehicles that you can take off the roads, and in this case buses, uh, is very good and it frees up capacity uh, on uh, already busy perimeter roads. Excuse me. When you say bus trips, is that, that does mean 50,000 buses or 50,000 bus passengers? 50,000 bus movements. So uh, the system replaced uh, essentially a bus service that um, is running on a 10 month schedule, um, 22 uh, hours a day, 365 days of the year. Uh, and by putting in this system, we've, we've taken out those buses and, and therefore taken the trips out. The other benefits, I'm not going to read through them. Um, you probably, as this audience, know all of them and, and, and intellectually, I'm sure, have bought into them. Um, what we can see, having proved the system at Heathrow, is we can see how we can start to unlock those benefits, uh, both for Heathrow and for other potential uh, clients that we're talking to uh, in UK, in Europe, and, and indeed around the world. So having had a long gestation period, having got system live, having got great reliability, having got great passenger feedback, what do we do now? Well, at Heathrow, uh, we're actually launching to the media next week. Um, so I'll probably have the same shirt and the same tie on and my smiley face um, with the uh, press from the UK. Um, and as far as the client's concerned, the BAA, the British Airport Authority that runs Heathrow, um, they're monitoring us quite rightly uh, and as you would expect, very hard. And they're, they're, a, they're a tough client, which for Ultra is great because we need tough clients. We, we, we don't want to have um, an easy time because it makes us uh, drive harder and it makes the team work, work better. And they're monitoring the operation, as I said before, they're very happy with the, the, early, the early results, as you would expect them to be when you get uh, reliability scores that I showed you and when you get passive feedback that I uh, showed you. Um, and we've just become part of Heathrow, part of Terminal 5, part of uh, the way that the airport works, whether it be terminal infrastructure, whether it be transit systems moving people between the satellite terminals at, at Terminal 5, whether it be part of Heathrow Express. We are just one of the other bits of the infrastructure at Heathrow. And um, that's great because it, we're not, we don't want to feel special. We just want to be a viable, a complementary part um, of Heathrow's ground transport. Um, and that's what the airport is feeling about us now, which is, which is really good. And in terms of Ultra, where, where we go next, um, we're proud to be able to stand, and I am representing the company, to say we've got something that works. It's um, not a test track anymore. It's not a mock-up anymore. It's got real people on it. Um, and we've proved that it can work. But we know we can do it better. We know that next time we can install it quicker. We know that next time we can install it cheaper. So in talking to other people around the world, we can show them what we've done, and we're talking to them about how we'll do it better uh, the next time. 
In terms of our thoughts, as Opera, on what's next for PRT and us as a group, we've proved, as I said, that it can work, we've proved that passengers can love it, and you do. But we do need, and forums like this are helpful, which is why I'm delighted to come and speak to you today, we need to raise awareness. We need to get people to consider PRT as a valid transport choice. We need to be professional and absolutely clear about what the business case for this is. Or if there isn't a business case financially. And we need to be honest about that because there might be financial elements to a business case and non-financial elements to a business case in terms of um, air quality, in terms of transport time. You can do your best to bring that back to dollars, pounds, euros, Swedish kroner or whatever. But it's important that we're honest about that and we don't overpromise on these types of things. So we need to be realistic <coughs> excuse me, about how we compare um, costs. Because we've got a good story to tell, but if we try too hard and oversell it, we're going to weaken our case. So we need to be careful. And we need to, therefore, to drive credibility out of this. That's all I had to say this morning. Um, as I said at the start, um, I had one simple message really, which says it's not theory anymore. And uh, with the video and hopefully with the slides I've shown, um, you've got that message very clearly. Thank you very much.